Undergravity is Google's new AI app builder and it has taken the internet by storm. Everyone is talking about how powerful it is and the fact that you can build full stack apps completely for free just by typing simple prompts in its interface. But what they are missing is that you can use Undergravity for way more than just building simple apps. That's why I created this Undergravity guide where I will be taking you from a complete beginner to an advanced user with Undergravity. So you can stop using it like another lovable and start taking advantage of all of its powerful features. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into it. Now the first thing you have to do is to go over to undergravity.google which I will also leave a link for in the description below and then simply download Undergravity either for Windows or Mac OS. And once you open it up, you're going to see this interface. Now don't worry, this might seem intimidating at first, but it's actually super simple to navigate. Now the first thing that we have to do is to simply come over here and open a folder for a brand new project. So literally all you have to do is to come over here and click on open folder. And then what you need to do is to select the folder in which you're going to save all of your code to. Now for this example, what I'm actually going to do is I will come over here and create a brand new folder, which I'm going to name Undergravity Guide. And then I will simply come over here and click on select folder. And once you do that, you will be brought over in this interface. Now, don't get intimidated, guys. This is actually super simple to navigate. On the right of the page, we have our agent, which is basically the box in which we're going to be chatting to Undergravity and basically telling it everything that we want to build. Then on the middle over here, we have the tab where we basically can see the different plans and roadmaps that the agent creates. And then over here to the left of the page, we're going to be able to see all the code that our Undergravity agent writes. So let's go over and start creating an app so you guys can see this in practice. Now what I'm actually going to do is I will leave Undergravity for a bit and I will go over to Gemini 3 which I'm going to use to create our first initial prompt. Now let's say we want to build an app similar to Typeform which can basically create different surveys. So what I'm going to do is I will come over here and say Hey, I want to create an app similar to Typeform so just create me a fully detailed prompt that I can give to an AI code builder so it goes ahead and builds me the app. Make it super detailed and make it mimic Typeform as much as you can. And now what I'm going to do is I will simply send this over. So now Gemini is going to go and create us our prompt. And boom, as you can see, it did exactly that. So all I'm going to do is I will simply come, I will copy all of this prompt and then I will come back over to Antigravity. And literally all I have to do is to simply come over here and paste it in in the agent box over here. Now underneath the agent box, we actually have two conversation modes. We have the planning mode in which the agent can plan before executing tasks, which basically makes it think more. And we also have the fast mode where the agent just simply goes and executes tasks very fast. Now, when you're first building an app, I would strongly advise you to come over here and select the planning mode so the agent can actually think for a longer time and it can go ahead and give you a better end result. And next to that, we also have the model picker where we can basically select which model we want to use. And as you can see, over here we have access to a bunch of different models. We have access to Gemini 3 with all of the different alternatives. We also have access to Chlor, Sonnet and also to Chlor Opus. And at last, we have access to GPT OSS. Now you might be wondering, Damien, which model should I be using inside Undergravity? Well, mainly you should be using the Gemini 3 models because Undergravity is specifically built around them. The only instance that I would advise you to use a model like Claude Sonner or even better Claude Opus is if you want to take a look at a very big code base and find an error. Since Claude Opus specifically specializes on that. But overall, I would say for 90% of the time, you should be using a model like Gemini 3 Pro High, for example, or any other Gemini 3 model, which is the model that I'm going to use for now. And I'm going to select this. And before I go over and send over this prompt, what I'm going to come over here and say is, hey, don't build the app here. Just create me a fully detailed plan so I can review it first. And then once I like it, I will then tell you to go and create this app for me. And now I will go over and send over this prompt. And the reason I specifically told it to create my plan first is because it might want to build a feature that I don't actually want in the app. That's why it's always better to first tell to create your very detailed plan. You go ahead, you take a look at the plan, you see, oh, is this something I want to add? Is this something I don't actually need? And then you can tell it, go ahead and make any necessary changes. So now literally all we have to do is to wait 
tool, the Undergravity Agent analyzes a request over here and creates a very detailed plan for us. And boom, as you can see over here, it already created us the task that it needs to go ahead and do, as you can see. And in a bit, it is also going to create us a very short brief, basically telling us the plan that it wants to go ahead and follow. And boom, as you can see, it just finished. And over here, we have two different tabs. As you can see, we have the tasks tab, where it also is telling us all the tasks that it needs to go ahead and do. And if I come over here and click on the implementation plan, we can see that it's basically a very brief overview for exactly what it wants to go ahead and build. It tells us the call description, important things that we need to look at, it also tells us the suggested tech stack, the database schema, and it basically tells us everything about the front-end architecture, how the user should interact with the app, and underneath it, it gives us a roadmap for everything that it's going to go ahead and do. Now, when you're building a project in under gravity, you actually need to sit there and read this, even if you're not a technical person, because this is actually pretty simple to understand. It's just the basic logic of the app and see if it has the features that you actually want in your app. And if it doesn't, you simply come over here and you prompt under gravity to go ahead and add a feature or remove a feature that you don't actually need. But this roadmap does look very good to me. So what I'm going to do is I will simply come over here and I'm going to say this looks awesome. Now simply go ahead and execute all these tasks and build me the app. And now all I have to do is to literally come over here and send over this message. So now under gravity is going to go and it's going to start executing all of its tasks one by one. And as you can see, under gravity has already started finishing up different tasks. And over here, we can see the first line of code that it has written. And if I actually click on them, I can see the exact code that is inside them. But literally all we have to do now is to sit back and basically let under gravity go and build this up for us. Just every time it is asking us to run something in the terminal, just click on accept, give it permission to run the command, and you will be good to go. And boom, as you can see, under gravity just finished making all the changes. And literally, all we have to do is to come over here and accept them. And you can see that it basically went over and wrote all the code of the app for us. Like if I navigate over here in the different tabs, we can see that it went over and it wrote a bunch of different lines of code. And over here to the right, it basically gives us a brief overview of of exactly what it built. It tells us it built the interface, the logic, the responder interface, the database integration with different forms with Postgres, and it also tells us how we can go ahead and run the app. Now, there are two ways you can run the app. You can simply come over here and say, hey, go ahead and run the app for me, and let under gravity go inside your terminal and run this app, or what you can do is run it yourself using the terminal. Now, I know a lot of people are actually afraid of the terminal, but you shouldn't actually be. Since you have this AI coding assistance that basically tells you exactly what you need to type once you open it up. Now, how do you open up your terminal? Well, all you have to do is to come right here to the top and click on the toggle panel button over here, and this is going to open up your terminal. Now, under gravity is literally telling us exactly what we need to do. It tells us that we first need to ensure that a database is running by typing dot env. So I will simply copy and paste it over here. And as you can see, it tells us that it's running. And now literally all we have to do is to copy this command, which is npm run dev, and literally come over here and paste it in. And that's literally all we had to do. Now our app is going to start running in the background in a local host. And how we can access it is by coming over here, if I actually open this up so you can take a better look at it, is by coming over here, and as you can see, we have this local host URL. So simply come over here, and click on follow link, and boom, as you can see, we can take a look at the app from this local host URL, and we can come over here, and use it just like we would be able to do with Typeform. For example, if you come over here and click on create new survey, I can come over here and create this brand new survey, either by using my AI assistant over here, or by manually coming in and adding in different questions and forms, which is basically exactly what Typeform does, and means that under gravity successfully managed to go and build us a very similar app. And as you can see, it also looks super clean. Since we use Gemini 3, which is by far the best model for building nice looking UIs. But when I was testing out this app, I found a problem because when I click on the analytics tab, basically nothing actually happens, which is something that we definitely need to go ahead and fix. All we would have to do is come back over to under gravity and say something like, hey, when I click on the analytics button, it doesn't actually work, so make sure you go ahead, you fix it, and you make it work correctly. And then I will simply come over here and click on enter. So now under gravity is going to go 
and make that fix for us and i think you guys can see how easy it is to basically take a look at that app see what we like see what we don't like and then come over here and using anti-gravity agent basically prompting it to make all the necessary changes but now that i show you all the basics of anti-gravity what i want to show you is some more advanced things which are actually super useful when it comes to building full stack functioning apps and the first thing that I want to show you is by coming over here and clicking on the three dots on the top right corner and then navigating over here in the MCP servers. Because with this tab, we can basically access all of the different apps and embed them inside the app that we're currently building. For example, a super useful MCP server, the Firebase MCP server, in which you can literally come over here, install in your machine, and then you will be able to access and use Google's Firebase inside your app. And specifically, you will be able to use it from simply coming over here telling your AI agent and to, for example, hey, go ahead and set up a project in Firebase for me. And if you send over this request and you have also successfully installed Firebase, then your anti-gravity agent will be able to go inside Firebase and using their MCP server create a project over in Firebase for you which is a process that does take a lot of time if you do it manually but if you use the Firebase MCP you can basically have your agent do it for you and the great part is that they literally have a bunch of different MCP servers you can also do the same exact thing with Superbase for example you can simply install the Superbase MCP by coming over here and clicking on install and then giving access to your Superbase access token and then you would be able to come over here and tell your anti-gravity agent to go and set up a project in Superbase for you so you don't manually have to go in Superbase and create a project for yourself and just to show you a few more they also have a Stripe MCP server which you can use to automatically embed payments in your app and they also have the GitHub MCP which you can install by simply coming over here and giving access to your GitHub access token and then you can just tell your agent hey push all this code over to GitHub and it's going to go ahead and do that for you but above the mcp service feature there exists this customizations feature which if i actually click you can see that i can come over here and add in different rules and different prompts which are called workflows that my ai agent is going to be using every time so if you want your ai agent to work with a specific set of instructions all you have to do is to come over here and click on add and then you can literally come over here and type in the instructions that you want. If, for example, you want your AI agent to always give you the terminal command after it finishes making some changes so you can run it immediately, you could tell it, hey, every time after you finish making a change, I want you to go ahead and give me the terminal command so I can run my app and take a look at it. And once you're done giving it your instructions, you simply come over here, you click on file, and then you come over here and you click on save. And then this is going to save this file, and this rule is going to be embedded inside your anti-gravity instance. And every time you run your anti-gravity agent, it is going to look at your rules, and then it's going to give you a response based on those. And the same exact thing happens with workflows. Workflows are basically prompts that your AI agent can follow. For example, if you come over here and let's name this prompt run up or improve the UI and we click on enter, we can literally come over here and create a specific prompt that we can then reference in our prompt box. So let's say this prompt is for example to improve the UI and for the content you could say something like hey I don't really like the UI of the app go ahead and make it super model with nice sharp colors it needs to have these specific characteristics needs to look modern have a dark nice aesthetic and have some nice animations and if you come over here you click on file and you save this then what you can do is come back over to your chat over here and then by coming over here your agent and by clicking slash you can literally select that specific prompt so you don't have to manually go ahead and type it every time and you can simply send it over and your agent will know oh this is a prompt that the user has already saved so we'll go ahead and improve the UI and you can obviously create these prompts with anything you can tell it to run a specific command you can give it some specific set of instructions you can basically do whatever you want so now that I also show you this what I then need to show you is all the options that you have over here to the left because right now we are in the explorer page where we basically can take a look at all the code of our app but there are more options over here since underneath the explore page we also have the code sets where you can come over here and search for specific lines of your code if you cannot find them otherwise and you can also replace specific words that are in your code as well 
if you actually want to. Then underneath R, we have the source control, which is a super useful feature, because what this allows us to do is to basically push all the changes that we made in our app over to GitHub. As you can see over here, these are all the changes that I have made, and I can literally come over here, type in a message, for example, you say V1 of type form, and then I can simply come over here and click on commit, and what this is going to do is it is going to take all the current code of my app and push it over to GitHub, so I have it safely stored over there. And underneath the source control, what we have is the run and debug button where you can run and debug your app. Now, if I'm gonna be honest, I usually don't use this since I just tell my AI agent to do this, but you can also do it from over here. And then underneath that, we have the remote explorer where you can view different data about your app. And underneath that is one super useful feature that Undergravity and VS Code has, which is their extensions. Since Undergravity is a fork of VS Code, you can literally access all the different extensions that VS Code has. And I obviously cannot explain to you all the extensions, there are literally hundreds of them, but you can come over here and search for any popular extension and you're going to find it. And personally, extension that I tend to use is the Cloud Code extension. Since this way, I'm able to use Cloud Code in my terminal inside under gravity, so I can have the best of both worlds. And I actually did make a video about this, which I'm going to put somewhere over here for exactly how you can set this up. But literally all you have to do to use an extension is to simply click on it, install it, and then you will be able to use it inside anti-gravity, which is super useful to do. And after I also show you this, it's time that I show you the most advanced thing that you can do inside anti-gravity. But for that, what we need to do is to come all the way over here to the right and click on Open Agent Manager. Because what this is going to do is open up a brand new interface, as you can see over here. And what this interface does is basically lets us run a bunch of different AI agents simultaneously. And just to show you how this actually works, let's say for example I wanted to do some research for a features that type for yes for my app. All I would have to do is to simply come over here and say, hey, now what I want you to do is to go ahead and do some research and figure out what specific features type for yes. And I want you to create me a list with features I can add in my app, which is basically a clone of type form. And I can go over here and send over this request. And now what this agent is going to do, as you can see it's currently starting, is it is going to go ahead and do this research for me. But how it does this is by actively searching the web in another tab, which we can actually take a look at over here. And the best thing with this is that we can run multiple agents simultaneously. So let's say, for example, we want an agent to also go ahead and write some code for our app. Well, all we would have to do is to come over here, open up a brand new tab and simply say something like, hey, now what I want you to do is to go ahead and write me some code for my time form clone, in which you are going to create a brand new section over there that is going to be AI form creation, which will allow my app to create a form just by typing a simple prompt in a simple chat box. And now I can go over and send over this request, which means I currently have two agents working simultaneously and helping me build my app at the same exact time. And as you can see, the other agent is asking for permission to give it access to some terminal commands. So what I'm going to do is I will come over here and click on accept so you can run this terminal command while simultaneously my other agent is creating a brand new section in my app and writing all the code for me. And that is why I would strongly advise you to also use the agent manager when you're using anti-gravity, since you can literally have a bunch of agents running simultaneously building features for your app at the same exact time. So this is exactly how you can go from a beginner to an advanced user with anti-gravity. But if you want a step-by-step -step guide for exactly how you can build and deploy a full stack app with a nice looking front end UI, with a full functioning back and user authentication, integrated Stripe payments, and basically everything that a full stack app needs to have, make sure you click the top link in my description and you come and check out my school community, in which I just launched my 30 day roadmap for building your own AI SaaS. And if you also join the community, you're going to get access to all of the other content that I have inside my classroom, which basically shows you how you can build and sell AI automations. And also you're going to get access to the series in which I document the process of me building my own AI SaaS. So if you want to get access to all of this content, along with a community of more than 150 members that are interested in AI and most importantly, making money with it, just like you, make sure you click the top link in my description and you come and check out my school community. And I will be waiting to personally help you build your own full stack app immediately when you join. But also YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy this video, in which I build a full stack app 
using just under gravity and firebase so make sure you go watch that next and i will see you over there